What's going on, everybody? This is Black Men Sundays. I'm your host, Corey Sylvester Murray, and we're talking about generational wealth. We're talking about finance, and we're talking about business. It's a Black Man Sunday. Time to put all childish things away. I refuse to be the man I was yesterday. Gotta put my best In today's show, we have a special guest, Munira Zahabi. This sister's Kenyan born, Indian Muslim. She's gonna give us some information today. She's known as the niche navigator. She's also the author of Podcasting with Purpose. We're also gonna get some information today about her podcast, Munira's Musings. She gives great information. She's a life coach, she's a coach. Her main thing is finding your niche. So without further ado, Manira Zahabi, welcome to Black Men Sundays. How you doing, sister? Thank you so much, Corey, for having me on your show. I am honored and humbled. I am fine. Thank you for having me. Definitely. And let's get started. You're known as the Niche Navigator. Explain I what that am. is. <laughs> I started my career as a coach seven, eight, eight years ago. And when I found the fact that I was able to help people figure out their niche. Somebody said, hey, you helped me navigate to my niche. And I said, oh, I'm the niche navigator. And that's what it is. Most people have a plan in their head. They don't execute it. And when they start executing it, you need a map to follow and have the breadcrumbs to follow back to where you want to go to. And if you have that map, I help you create that map. And hence, I'm the Niche Navigator. Definitely. And I checked out your website, thenichenavigator.com. And I mean, you have some phenomenal reviews. You know, everyone is saying you're an exceptional coach. So, you know, which Black Men Sundays, we're going to need some, give us some tips because our show is about generational wealth, finance, and business. So give us some, some tips from the Niche Navigator. So tips and tricks. I have written several books. One of my books is The Philosophy of Niche Principles. That book is all about execution. Many of us have a plan. They feel like they need to be somewhere or where they are at, they're not happy where they're at. So what they need to do is they need to go somewhere and create wealth. Most of it is because they're just stagnant. They're tired of being where they are. When they start working towards where they want to go and execute that plan, that is where I come in because I can take you there. I can hold you there. Most people have a lot of experiences. They have so much knowledge within themselves, but they don't take inventory of it. So let's help. I help you figure out what inventory of skills you have and then use those skills to take you to the next level in your life. Oh, wow. Great information. So what's the importance of finding your niche, especially, you know, because a lot of brothers and sisters that listen to our show are entrepreneurs. You know, we're trying to create some generational wealth. So tell us the importance of finding your niche. Let me give you an example. I had somebody who came to me and said to me, she was on my show, Munir's Musings, and she said, I don't know what I want to do, but I want to take what I have learned in different coaching places, different coaches that I've worked with and take their stuff and teach them. I said, okay. She wanted to go back to the job where she was fired from so she can help them become leaders. I said, huh, okay. Okay. But when I started talking to her and uncovering, you know, taking the layers off of the onion, I found out that she was renovating her grandmother's home in Italy. And she, this house had eight bedrooms, big house. She was renovating it. She kept going back and forth because she was renovating the place, but she didn't know what she was going to do with it. You're sitting on a gold mine. Most people are sitting on a gold mine, but they don't realize what they are sitting at. If you're going to be a coach, let me ask you this. Do you have something that you're sitting on that you can take that and give value to people? After talking to her and working with her several sessions, she realized that she could do couples retreats girls retreats, bridal retreats, and take people to Italy. One, she was from there. She knew the language. She knew the area. She knew all the places where everybody needed to go to. 
and become a tourist attracted person help with you know the wine tours over there take people to the historic places over there give them a little bit of history and all by having all of them stay at her grandmother's home when i first talked to her this was in 2018 immediately after i put the plan in place she took several trips in 2018 2019 2020, Italy went down because it wasn't COVID related. So 22, she started taking the trips again and she's making money. So sometimes it's not always about what knowledge you have or what you want to do. So sit around and figure out what you're sitting on because you don't know the knowledge you have or the thing you have is what everybody is seeking. Definitely. And on, and on this show, you know, we're seeking generational wealth as I uh, stated in your intro, you Kenyan born. So, you know, you live in Chicago and congratulations. You just have, you just got your honorary PhD um, in human philosophy. So that's phenomenal. But, you know, being Kenyan born and being an Indian Muslim as well, you know, generational wealth would be a big thing. Like we just had my brother uh, Kalali Dogbe on the show a week ago. His, fa his uh, parents are immigrants from Ghana and he said basically generational wealth, that was just a part of coming over here and making a better life for yourself. So just give us, let's talk a little bit about you and how you're establishing generational wealth, especially being Kenyan born. So, yes, I was born in Kenya. 15 years later, I moved to Tanzania. I was married at 15. I had a lot of opportunities in my life, but that didn't come to pass because stepmother happened and I got married now I came here my job was to produce a son and three daughters later I had a son and when I came to America when I got the chance to come to America because there is a DV1 visa program that was started by President uh, Bill Clinton and he was asking people to come when I got the chance to come to America this was like my life changed because one, freedom, right? America is a land of opportunities that people living here or who are born and bred here don't even see that because they are so used to it. People from coming from another country, it is like, oh, wow, so many things are possible. It opens your eyes education-wise, opportunities-wise. The fact that you have running water every time you open a tap, that's amazing. And that tap water you can drink because in where I came from, you would have to filter the water, boil the water, filter the water, then drink it. <laughs> so it's a lot of work. But this country is amazing. This is where I call home now. Yeah, definitely Chicago. Yeah, because when I'm looking around, I mean, you have the Niche Navigator, you have your podcast, you have books. I'm just tripping. You're selling your book for 99 cents. I'm going to have to get an autographed copy. I'll pay the extra dollar for that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I, I see that, you know, you're definitely establishing wealth in various avenues. And that leads to my next question. You know, when we talk about brothers and sisters trying to find their niche, they may have that one special niche that, okay, I make great money with this, but you know, there's other streams of income out there. So how can someone that they basically mastered their niche and they're making great money from that, but they want to get in other avenues of wealth building. What tips would you have for them? So look at McDonald's, right? Every so often they have a special of this burger or look at Arby's. They, they have the meat, of course, but they have a different kind of a burger every time you open, you switch on the TV. And if you're not watching TV, you need to watch TV. If you're an entrepreneur, you need to just watch TV for the sake of the ads out there. We all know the golden arches. Everywhere we go, even in China, when I went there, we saw the golden arches. We felt a little bit closer to home, but we like that. However, let me tell you something. The fact is that they enhance, change, reassess, reinvent something, add a little bit, and then create a new product. Even if it's just a sauce, just that is going to create. So all of the things is you just not have one item, but you also need to create and make other things 
possible. Why would you do that? One, because people get bored listening to the same message. If you bought a car last year, chances are the model this year is a little bit different because they moved the switch somewhere else and made it enhanced. So why do they enhance it? Because they want to make their product better. If they do that, if the big companies do that, why as a little entrepreneur wouldn't you do that? So enhance your products. And one of the things to do that is also collaborate with people. If you get on my show, I'll get you on my show or let's work on this together. There are so many opportunities out there. And the other thing is find if you have referral links, get referral links. If you have referral links, you can make a little bit of side income. That's the way to do passive income. I was reading an article from Grant Cordon. He didn't just become a millionaire overnight. He started doing multiple streams of income by using leveraging other people's products. If those millionaires are still doing it, why are we not? So let's go do that. <laughs> Definitely. I'm loving it. Hey, talk that talk. Talk that talk. So the first thing I noticed when I researched you, I went straight to the Niche Navigator website. The first thing I saw, it says, give your business a voice. So for just a lot of entrepreneurs listening to this show, explain what that means and give us a couple tips on that as well. So you figured out your niche. Everybody's figured out their niche and they think they know their niche. They've solidified. A niche is a foundation for your business. However, everybody is looking to do Google ads. Many of them, many of us entrepreneurs don't have that kind of extra cash sitting around. Entrepreneurs means a little bit of struggle. We are all struggling. So what? One way to do it is get on a podcast. Get your business out there. Broadcast it to the world. It's free, right? My book, Podcasting, for, with purpose is just that you want to do that because you want to research which audience you want to get in front of otherwise you'll be spending and so you'll be like a gerbil on a wheel because you don't know who your exact target audience is go find podcasts and get on it i help people do that as well you need to leverage the free stuff in the world to get your business out there heard. And that's what I do also, give your business a voice. Because uh, your podcast, Munira's Musings, talk to us a little bit about your podcast. When I started Munira's Musings, I was just a curious personality. I love people. And I know each person out there has a story just like I do. Well, not everybody has come from Kenya, but they have a story. So when I sit there and ask them, most people shy, are shy, don't share it, but you give them a mic, they'll just give you everything. So that free advice is what my show is about. Where were you and what are you doing today? Munir's musings is not just musings, it's not funny. Sometimes we even cry because we've gone through stuff. We've gone through heartfelt problems. We've gone through death. We've gone through all those... But people just want to let other people hear them. And there's somebody out there who needs to listen to your message. Share it. Wow, great information. All right, Kalala, you have a question for her? Oh, for sure. Just like to, once again, just uh, appreciate you coming on the show and uh, sharing uh, your knowledge with us. I've already gotten so much out of what you said so far, so I'm definitely enjoying it. Um on the uh, internet, I read uh, something that said uh, competition is for people at the bottom, but people at the top collaborate. Uh, you spoke about collaborating and networking already as a way for success. Um, could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yes. Um, I have a show. Right now, I have a show. Most people are think, you know what, why should I, if I have a show, why should I be on another person's show? I am on this show, Black Men Sunday and I'm thinking I should be on that show even the name doesn't say anything nothing about color nothing about men it's a show thank you for having me so this is a way to collaborate because I have established my audience you have established your audience 
there's somebody out there who needs to listen to my voice. And if you come on my show, then somebody on my audience needs to listen to you. If we collaborate and create a show that is going to just knock people's socks off, why don't we do that? So that's my way of collaboration. The other way also is there are so many speaking engagements out there. Somebody somewhere is going to listen to you and say, you know, I want that woman on my show or I want that man on my show. Then the doors of opportunity open up. But you got to start somewhere. They just, it's not just like you sitting on the sidelines and it's its going to happen one day. No, you got to work hard for it, my friend. I appreciate that. Definitely, definitely. Uh, we'll be looking to uh, extend my networks and collaborate even more now after you say you're inspiring me to do that. So definitely do that more. Um, you also talked about, uh, you know, continuing, continuously enhancing your products and being creative. Do you have recommendations for how you can enhance your products, whatever product you might be, uh, trying to, trying to sell or distribute? So one way to do it is ask the people who've taken the classes, right. And say, what do you think I can do to enhance this product? Or do you think I'm missing something? And people are so available to give you advice. Take that into notification and just add a little bit more stuff. This is what Microsoft did. When Microsoft came up with Windows 3.1, it was the worst product ever mm -hmm. until they came out with 95, which was the basis of everything they created, right? And they enhanced it. But 3.1, the ME version was the worst one. The ME version, so they would ask people and users. This I'm, I'm talking about 30 years ago, almost. Mm -hmm. So they started asking people as to give them feedback. And when they started doing that, what happened is what they started creating and ad, ad, enhancing their product. So when they did that and asking people for feedback, they now have a robust system, although it's not foolproof, but they still have the, the, the Windows 95 came up as the foundational system basis. They enhance it all the time, but that was the one thing they needed. And if they could do it and they are multi-billion dollars, why can't we do it? So we have to learn from the giants. And everything I'm telling you is nothing new. We've all heard it. We just need to rehear it again. <laughs> it's like I'm being in a you know in a church, you know, it's different priests tell us something different, but there's one that's just gonna hit us right in the heart and say, Oh. I need to do that. How many times have we heard this mu this music or the message before, but it never we never took it to heart. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, I definitely get that. It's it's not just about hearing it; it's about actually applying it and putting it in practice in our lives. Um, definitely enjoy that point because you know in the in the tech the tech world where I come from, we call it user engagement. Like that's what you're talking about with uh, uh with Microsoft. They engaged in user engagement. You know, or some people call it customer feedback. Um, where it's like, you know, and I, I do find it, especially with like upstart, like, like starting out, you know, entrepreneurs, they're afraid to go and ask the people who they're trying to actually sell something to what they think about the product. And, you know, but that's the way you can really improve. So I definitely appreciate you for bringing that out. That's an important point that we all, if we've heard it before, we all definitely need to hear it again. So definitely yes. appreciate you uh, bringing that out. Thank you, Kalali. Yeah. Oh, wow. She actually pronounced it correctly, too. I had to get on Eric last week, but I edited out the show. So <laughs> <laughs> I had to get on him about that. So, you know, it's, it's not good. it's not hard to say, man. It's like uh, simple. Uh, but you forget, a, I come from Kenya. That's, a, that's what I was saying. She's a fellow African, so she knows how to pronounce the name properly. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So my next question for you is, um, what are some of the companies that you work with and how were you able to establish those business relationships? So one of the companies I worked with was Popeye's Chicken. There was a owner. I mean, of course, it's an independent franchise, but I had an, a owner who had about several um, different establishments, like different in, in the Chicagoland area. What I did with them was I had a program that I was doing uh, in person before COVID, and I asked them to sponsor, come in and sponsor the lunches, and they did. And that's 
how we establish relationships. I went in and did some free stuff for their, for their company managers. Each facility had a manager, so I worked with the managers for a while. And then we brought in the sub, the, the, the vice managers, they call them, and then the company staff and communication was a big thing. So one of the, that, that was one of the companies that I worked with, but otherwise I usually work with independents um, coaches who are trying to establish their footprint in the world. I think all entrepreneurs have just jumped into this pool, but we all need to move away from the same thing and go towards this island that we think is the awesome island where Grant Cardone and everybody lives. So we need to swim away, but everybody just seems to be swimming in the same pool. And one of the things that I feel like everybody else should do is if, if they either collaborate or they create a different program or service to provide a different program and service, then they can move a little bit further into the island. So also doing some research on you from struggling to thriving, my journey to my niche. Explain that to us. So the mentality when you come from a third world country is you want to establish yourself in a fact that you want to have a good job. You have to find yourself. I did everything in my life opposite. So I'll tell you when I was 15, I got married. I just finished high school. The day I gave my final exam was the one function afternoon. I went home and I had a function for the wedding. Two days later, I was married. So that was life. I didn't go to college. But that yearning for learning was so well enhanced in me that I just needed to go and learn. Coming to America created that the fact is that I had children when I brought my husband, my children, all of them into America. But there was something missing. I was working at a like a JC Penney store in California. I lived there for 17 years worked there and then somebody told me hey you need to go and do this uh, pharma I'm doing this pharmacy technician program so you need to go do that well if she could do it I could do it so I went in there learned the program got a job in the hospital but then I found out that there are people out there who go to school because that doesn't happen in Kenya or in Tanzania at night so how do you have a full-time job and then go to school? And how can you do that? Because school in Kenya is full-time. You'll be like nine to five, you're in school. So how does that happen? So that was a learning curve. And so it was every person that touched my life gave me a little more. So I was very open to ideas. I started learning. I went to school. I, I got to associate degrees, <laughs> got my bachelor's, got my master's. It took me nine years to do all that. And then I was like, oh, what else is there that I can absorb, I can learn? I needed to do that. So to come back to your question is that, are you afraid to grow? Because most people, once they have a degree, they think I'm done. And I was listening to one of your podcasts where one of your guests said, I just wanted to learn from other people who have done it. They, I'm just going to take every piece of advice. So keep your ears open. You never know who is going to touch your life by giving you one piece of advice or you overhear something and you think, really, I can do that? So you're talking about generational wealth. There are people who have come to America and have buildings and they rent out these buildings for themselves and you know in real estate i've never been able to do that but i was able to learn so much that now i want to impart that knowledge to everybody else just give value to people and you'll never go wrong great information and um i have a couple more questions for you but before i ask those how are you enjoying you are you enjoying yourself on black men sundays I am. This is amazing. Thank you. Definitely. You know, you know, you're the niche navigator, you know, podcasting with purpose is coming out. So, you know, I'm trying to let you know, we know we we're, we're pros over here. We know what we're doing this black men Sunday. So let's, let's keep the bus moving over here. So, um, you know, and before I let you go, I, I, I kind of want to stay along the lines of generational wealth. Cause I mean, your story is very unique. Like I said, you're basically, you, you basically have a lot of streams of income. So for entrepreneurs, for people that 
may want to get a business, but you know, uh, I don't really have the money. I'm a little scared. I'm just going to wait a few more years. And then you know what happens after that. But what advice would you give for the brothers and sisters listening to the show that are afraid to step in the business world or afraid to step in, be a realtor and sell homes? Like what advice would you give for the brothers and sisters that are, that have fear? The fact is, if you, if you don't try it, you'll never know. So you got to try it. The Maasai of Kenya, they have a saying that if you tell a child to not stop, to, to stop playing with fire, they'll never listen. But the minute they get burned, they'll never play with fire. What I'm saying to you is taking that and just using the opposite, play with fire. You may never get burned, but if you get burned, you know what not to do. Let's go find another path. I'm the niche navigator. I can create a different path for you. Do I create the paths that don't fail? Yes. Sometimes it doesn't work. So we just have to go back to the drawing board and we create a new path and say, okay, this didn't work. What worked? What strategy did we use that worked? And how can we move it a little bit so then we can change it? Your GPS system does the same thing. If there is a road closure, Yesterday, I went to Chicagoland, uh, the city, and they are getting ready for Potapalooza, and all of the roads are closed. How do I go and see the Buckingham Fountain there if all the roads are closed? And I had a guest with me. So then we had to reroute and reroute, and we rerouted, and then we finally took a glimpse of the, of the Buckingham Fountain, and then we came home. But the fact of the matter is if your GPS can reroute, why can't you? Wow, great information. As I'm looking at the reviews, exceptional coaching, niched, leadership skills, exceptional coaching. I mean, you must be doing some something right because you've got a lot of reviews. So before I let you go, so I already know we're going to have to, some people are going to are gonna, are gonna want tips all day. But I kind of want a couple of more tips before I let you go. Again, we're focused on generational wealth. We're focused on the entrepreneurs out here. You know, what other tips from the niche navigator, can you share with us? You have a plan. Sometimes you don't even know what you are thinking about. Or you are going to sit there. For those people who are thinking, I don't know what I'm doing. How can I be an entrepreneur? Let me ask you something. Do you solve a problem? How do you solve a problem? Because I guarantee you, if you are sitting in a group of friends and somebody says, you know, the diapers that I use for my baby leak all the time. I promise you, you have a solution. You're giving advice all the time. Somebody says, I want to eat authentic Italian food. And you know of a restaurant, you're going to give them advice. If you are that kind of a person, go ahead and create that question and answer. Because you know what's going to happen is when you start talking to people, you'll figure out what questions they have and what answers you have. When you know that you have the answers, you can be in business. So that's the first tip. The second one, be inquisitive. You have to be inquisitive. And I'm saying, I'm not saying inquisitive, like what is my neighbor wearing? I'm not saying that way. I'm saying why, if he can do it, then why can't I? If that girl from... The store didn't tell me that she was working in a pharmacy. She was doing a pharmacy technician course. I was on a waiting list for three years, but I kept bugging them. I need that. I need to be placed in this program. You have to take me. I was one of the top students there. But the fact is, you have to be inquisitive. If somebody else can do it, why can't you? And I promise you, the little bit of tweaks that you make in your life, you will become the person that people go to. So be ready and don't stand on the sidelines, you know, jump in the pool, just jump in the pool. The water is fine. If it's cold a little bit, you'll get used to it after two seconds, but just jump in. If you want to be an entrepreneur, just jump in. Also, there are other ways you can become an entrepreneur. Find a company, you know, the they talk about multi-level marketing companies, join one. And I'll tell you why. One of the things that those companies teach you is how to become a people person. They'll teach you how to sell. Learn those tips. You don't have to follow that business. But once you learn your skills, you will become the next person that you were 
better person than you were yesterday. Definitely. And before I let you go, I want to talk about uh, your new book, Podcasting with Purpose. I mean, obviously, you're on a podcast. You have your own podcast. What was the impetus of writing that book? I <laughs> funny because when I started my podcast I still today I've been in uh, this is my sixth season there's some people who are never ready who come in they don't listen to the the they give you give them instructions on how to show up they don't show up they don't ask you stuff they still ask you for information that you've already given to them six seven seven times so that was my pet peeve. And that pet peeve became my book because I was like, I'm looking at it from both sides. This book is a podcast that looks at both sides as to what a podcast host needs to do and what a podcast guest needs to do. And what are the, those specific things that they need to do to be a successful podcast? Because you're not here to just make waves you're here to share the information you already have and you want to give your business a voice right definitely all right so i have to ask you this and this is my final question for you since you know you have your book podcasting with purpose you know how are we doing on black men sundays how is this interview you know come for you today how would you rate us based on the podcasting with purpose book i'm just curious this is amazing because you were right on point. You gave me all the tips and tricks. You gave me the link. I was ready. I, as a guest, was ready. You, as a host, was ready for me, too, because you've done your research on who I am, what what I do. I mean, you're li literally out there. Even some things that I've forgotten I've got on my website, but it's there, right? So you've done your web your homework i did homework too so the fact of the fact is this this is an amazing show because everybody came together and this is one way of collaborating we want our voices heard you me everybody here so this is great nine point seven Oh, the nine points. Oh, I don't get the 10. I don't no, get the dunk. what happened no, i don't give you the 10 i tell you why as a teacher I, get, I never give full marks, partly because there's always room for improvement. Now, what you need to improve on, I don't know. But there's always room for improvement. We can always improve ourselves, even yep. me. So I give myself a 9. <laughs> wow, we get the 9.7. Well, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Well, uh, Munira Sahabi, thanks for coming on Black Men Sundays. We enjoyed you. We enjoyed your time. I've checked out your podcast a couple of times. We're enjoying that, too. Um, and thank you. And thanks for coming on Black Men Sundays and enjoy your week. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. And I will do my due diligence to promote this. Thank you. It's a Black Man Sunday. Time to put all childish things away.